Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praises, all praises to the Most High Yah, the King of Yashrael and the Governor and Ruler of all the earth. I do hope that you are well and that you are still trusting only in Yah. Hallelujah. Because He alone is worthy to be praised. He alone is worthy to be exalted. He alone is worthy to be adored. He alone. Hallelujah. And I am grateful, I am grateful, I am thankful to Abba Yah because of who He is. He doesn't change and He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And I am so grateful to Him for everything. And I hope you are like me, even though the world is now rejoicing, some parts of the world, that they have their King and they can do them, that's their King. All praises, I am at. <laughs> mad but I tell you I only have one king and I may be in the commonwealth but I have one king Yeshuael the king of Yeshuael hallelujah hallelujah I want to say something quick to you today and it is that not because your family member has mental health issues means they should live on the street unkept and begging for food and I know it's not an easy task I know there are challenges, but where mama used to say, where there's a will, there's a way. And growing up, we had a family member with mental health issues, and he was given a little place to live, and we made sure that he ate and had clean food. That's it. You can't strap them down. They're going to move about. And at that time, you know, not about no medication, right? And growing up on a family island, but I never see like what I'm seeing and I saw people living on the street because they don't, their mind, you know, they have having mental challenges, only coming to New Providence. And so I want to encourage you, if your family member has mental health issue, where there is a will, there's a way, there's things you can do. We have to get out of our comfort zone. You understand me? I see some, a situation I'm dealing with. You understand me? And she wants a place to live can't find a place for her to live right now and, and pray with me please because i'm before the father i'm saying i what what to do you know no place and the family saw me talking to her one relative and come telling me oh we to win our best she won't take her medicine not because she doesn't take her medicine means she should live on the street you understand me not because she doesn't take her medicine. You don't have to babysit somebody. We have to stop trying to control people. She wants to live in her house. Let her stay there. You have to. And I've been dealing with this lady now for quite some months. Quite tidy. She's one of the only ones on the street that is clean and change her clothes. You understand me? And she's been looking. And, and, and I want you to pray. I don't have to go into all the details, but pray the Father knows the situation I'm dealing with because there's a lot going on and she wants some place to live. And I've been trying to help her with that. So just pray for me in that regard that the Most High would help me find a place for this woman to live until the government is able to do what they need to do. But it hurts my heart that she is living on the street. You understand what I'm saying? And so... Um, I've spoken to some of them and they would um, live, have a place to live if there was, they would go and live in a place if there was one available. And as family members, you only, I know family members who provide their um, cousin, relative, uncle, whoever had mental health issue, like us, a little shack, a little house. And just made sure that he had clean clothes and, and food so they don't have to be wandering the street looking for food. That's it. You know, and in and, and, and this case, we bought her a tent because that's what she asked for, like a camping tent. We set it up. We got permission from her in-law, and she was there for months, 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 quite fine, doing fine, looking for a job. But some other family members or relatives in laws didn't want her there. And one day, they just hop and went and picked everything and threw it in the garbage, everything, everything. And I thought that was so unkind. I was so bothered. It took me a while before I could have even ran around there to see it. Because I was bothered. You understand me? That they would do something so unkind. I could see you saying, we don't want you on your property. But this is a human being. 
You understand me? Just there in a little tent or when it rain or whatever, she can have a place to lay down and change her clothes or whatever. That was too much. She, she couldn't take the property. And this is what I'm talking about. The heart of people. Listen to me. This land and thing that you're all holding on to. You ain't carrying that nowhere. You understand me? And I'm saying to the father, if I, where I'm living now, it's an apartment building. But if I had my own space, I have property on somewhere. But if, and if I could have, she would have set it up. I would set up a place now with plenty of these. Because I see in the States, you have people selling their houses and living in tents. You understand me? I had another family member, families who are um, homeless and stuff. And they say, get us a tent, but they have no place to put it. And you can't put these things on people, properties. So I want you to pray with me because it's really a burden on me to see people on the street and listen to me. Rent, we know, is expensive. Finding a place, even for $100, will be just a rental space, a room. You can't, it's, it's like, it's expensive. $140, $150. You understand me? Because that's the issue right now. So... I want to encourage you, if you have family members with mental health issues, listen, when the scripture said it, it is in your power to help somebody, don't withhold it. You understand me? And we have to, we have to be able to take care of those that are less fortunate than us. And this is what loving your neighbor as you love yourself came, comes in. I put a post on Facebook that love your neighbor as you love yourself simplify means what I want for me, I want for you. And I'm home in my house in the night and I feel so bad that I'm there. And I left her last night sleeping on, on a business, on the business, um, on the porch of a business. You understand me? And I felt bad. Because it should not be. And it's inhumane. It's inhumane. And some of these, I know some persons I'm dealing with for years and years and years. They have been on the street. And people looking at me because I'm standing up talking to them. They're humans. You understand? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. What I want for me, I want for you. And you, we should not be at peace when we could see someone. And we have probably ability to help. And we withhold that help from them. And as family members, in your yard, if you own the property, put a little place in the back. I know of a situation I dealt with years ago when I was pregnant with my son. The young woman didn't have mental health issue, but she had the virus, AIDS. And her family, well, at that time, they were uncomfortable and whatever. So they built a shack, a nice one-bedroom um, room in their yard. And that's where she lived until she died. You understand me? You can do that for your family member. You may not want them in the house. Because like the sister of 22-year-old that I'm dealing with, um, I was dealing with, and spoke to the sister. Her mother had two children, her and the boy. When the mother was alive, she had him on medication because he got laced. The mother, unfortunately, was a nurse and died during COVID. And so from the mother died, that young man has been on the street. And it's so sad. And, oh, I don't want him in my house. I don't want my children because I don't know when he can go off. And I'm looking at her. This is your brother. Provide a place. At least make sure he clothes change. Give him food to eat. Because I didn't see him out. That's how I became aware because I saw him out. And I went and said, young man, why are you out here? Where's your family? What are you doing? He just wants something to eat and whatever the case may be. And I don't give them money. So I went and, and every time I see him, I would say, did you eat? And I would go and get him something to eat. You understand me? But families, there are more you can do. There are more that you can do to help your family member. And we need to start listening. These are the people who will keep telling you, God is this and God is that and God is the next. Come on, man. Come on. Love is an action word. It is something you do. And you may not be able to take it on. Like I said, it is, I'm sure it's a lot to deal with. But there is something you can do. You can even make sure that they eat every day. You understand me? Make sure that they have something to eat. I know another family, a friend of mine. Her family member had mental health. They provided him a little place. And every day... They went and made sure he had, because um, they didn't want him walking the street. Let them know. 
and they've said to me if they had a place they would live in their place let them know this is your space and we can come and give you food and and make sure you have food and water and everything said so that way because when you see them out on the street they're looking for something to eat and it's so sad and i know let me mention this before i go for years now there's a woman that was living on the street and right now she's packed everybody can see her you understand I me? And I speak with her occasionally and I said, where's your family? And she said, me? <sighs> my money is my family. You understand? It is sad. And this is why I thank the Father for mental health. You know, years ago, about a year or two, I put on the Facebook, don't lose your mind. Don't lose your mind. Listen to me. Hold on to your mental health. You understand me? Because let me tell you something. Once you see you lose your mind, I don't know about nowhere else in the world, but in the Bahamas, ain't no coming back from that. You understand me? For some reason, people will always see you in that state. I know family members right now, and I mentioned this in a video I did before, their family didn't even go get them out of the institution. And we have to do better. But my point for this video is not because your family members are living on the street, not because your family member have mental health issues, mean they have to live on the street. The street, we have to do better. You understand me? We have to stop talking love and showing. There is something that you can do. You understand me? Do what you can do. Make the, um, whoever the authorities are, um, institutionalize them or whatever the case may be. If you can't house them, you understand so I want to encourage you with this today it's a burden on me and like I said I want you to help me pray that the father would open doors for this woman that I'm dealing with I need you to help me pray because I am trying to find a place for her to live so pray 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 for me in that regard Shalom to you blessings